All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, we are very early today, but it's okay. We need to answer some lies. You know, one of the method Muslims they try always to embrace you is is to 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 uh, to quote verses from the Quran, and they try to manipulate as much as they can the meaning of those verses and make them about science. This is something we witness over and over and over. And we will never give up. Uh, it doesn't matter how how uh, how much and how long they continue with their lies, exposing their lies. There is a video in the front of me. I'm, I'm not going to play the video. However, the video is going to be. It is in the info uh, of the video, which means you can click in it and you can watch it yourself. The video is called. When are you officially dead? Quran answered before science. There is no clash. I mean, no, I don't know what, what there is no clash mean, but let it go. Now, Islam answer before science. You know, when you hear this, you ask yourself, really, Islam answer before science? What Islam said? So we will go and review what the Muslims are saying in those verses and we will laugh together at their lies. In the video, the Muhammadan, they mention for us uh, certain verses. I will put them on the screen so we can watch them together. All right. I wish I can play the video, which is made by the Muslims, but as you know, uh, they will flag me for copyright, you know, so I'm trying to avoid I, I, I'm, I'm saying you I wish really I can play it because that will make it more funny But just to avoid their games uh, This woman she said the Quran before science science speak that when you when you sleep like you know your brain is like almost is doing nothing and this is absolutely false science doesn't say that the brain is always still in control and the brain switch from mood to mood as an example when you sleep in your back the brain is the one who order you as an example or order your cells to switch from consuming food to saving food as in, which mean if you eat and this is why uh, all doctors they say to you if you eat don't sleep and lay down in your back because that will make the brain give an order for your body to the saving mood because now you are not going to function doing some hard labor so when you sleep in the level your body get the message from the brain saying save it's time to save the battery all right so the brain is always working the brain never stop and the brain sometimes even when you are asleep it might be even work harder and make you tired from when you are awake and this is what people they call dreams or even sometimes it can be nightmare why because your 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 brain is processing a lot of information you have in your head from experience to something heard to something happened to you to something you saw in the news all of those they can they might come in your dream why because your brain is not as they say in the video is in the stage of death that's false brain never stop working and actually they themselves they could contradict themselves they said when your brain is dead then you are dead so how you say to me when you are asleep you are dead your brain is dead uh, if we go in the Quran we will quote the verses they use for us Uh, to prove their point, which is really false and stupid. Let us see. <clears throat> Chapter 39, verse number 42. Let us see the translation for this verse. Please, if you don't mind, invite your friends. Most of people, they do not know that I am up because this is not our usual time to go and do broadcast. But as I said, I will not hesitate to waste a moment to get the Abdul busted with their lies. 
So in chapter 39 verse number 42 they say the Quran speaking about that confirming that the death is the death of the brain but if we look in the verse we will not see anything of that let us go and see exactly what the Quran is saying 3942 Muslim translation I remember I'm using Muslim translation all right uh, <clears throat> We saw you say, this is Jeff Ali, okay. It is Allah who takes the soul of men at death, and those who die not, He takes, uh, uh, which means during their sleep, those on whom He has passed the degree of death. He keeps back, He keeps back from returning to life, but the rest He sent to their body for a term appointed verily. In this are signs for those who reflect now if you read this this is very, very stupid and meanless i mean what so what what allah he says to us nothing if, if allah did not make you die when you are dead you are asleep that's what it says it doesn't say about your brain there's no word the brain there and look how imagine how the muslims insert things insert science in something very stupid all what the verse here muhammad is saying and I will prove it to you. I mean, you know, you see that the problem is that Muslims they assume that you are stupid and you know nothing about Islam, and they don't assume that you will speak a Christian prince. What the idiot Muhammad is speaking about is the situation of the Arab. Many of the Arab, when they go to sleep, they die. Why? Because they got bitten by snakes or by scorpions. So the lucky one who don't die when he is asleep. You know, until death come to you. But you know, usually people die when they are asleep. It's a it's a it's a better way life. It is a very harsh desert, and usually people die when they are asleep. And now, how we can prove that? How we can prove that this is what the verse is about? <clears throat> Let us go and see the interpretation for the verse. This is the verse, and this is Ibn Kathir. This is Ibn Kathir. Who is Ibn Kathir? For those who do not know. He is a Muslim scholar, and when we say a Muslim scholar, it means he is certified donkey, big donkey. Now, here he is explaining to you what happened exactly. However, Muhammad is the best one to explain the verse for us, which the Muslims try to make it about science. Muhammad said about this verse, when any of you goes to bed, let him brush down the bed with his garment for he does not know what has come on his bed since he left it do you see it this is what they are talking about that the death when you sleep you go to the bed and you are an arab boy and you live in the desert and Allah knows what is in your bed now. You might have a scorpion, you might have a snake, you might have a blah, blah, blah. So all what this verse about have nothing to do with the brain, have nothing to do with that your brain go in a stage of sleep when you are asleep, have nothing to do with everything they are saying. It's about bugs and insect and deadly ones spiders etc they are going to be in your bed and they might kill you because muhammad he witnessed many of his followers they die when they are in sleep because their beds are very dirty do you see how easy we get the abdul busted so imagine from something have to do with a scorpion spiders bite dying by by you know by by an animal or an insect in your bed muslims they make it about Allah is telling us before science that the real death is when your brain die and I have a surprise for the Muslim You liars you forgot that you Muslims believe And you are the one who said that in the video I want people to watch the video and post your comment and tell them to come and watch here You see she said in the video for sure this woman in the video she is just a paid woman maybe she is married to a muslim and you know uh, it's a great business uh, she said that it's proven by science that the death of the heart have nothing to do with the real death that is not really true however death 
death is not only when your heart stop it is when your brain stop because you can retrieve the heart <clears throat> but there is a limit if you pass certain limit you cannot retrieve the uh, uh, the heart because simply the blood you know will uh, 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 will lose its flexibility and uh, you cannot retrieve the heart no more and the brain functioning it's possible that we can keep the body running and functioning by providing food etc but the brain is dead so you can be still alive literally alive but dead as a brain so both are not really are not really necessarily mean you are dead which mean if your brain is dead you are not necessarily dead you are dead in the brain but your heart can still function and if your heart is dead your brain not necessarily dead because your brain is still working this is why if you go and give CPR for somebody yes his heart is dead but yet his brain is not functioning but what this have to do with this verse nothing in fact the Muslims they believe that when a Muslim person die he is still alive even when he is in the grave but before we go there let us get them busted and show them what the Quran says she said that the brain is the one who de decide your death she she mentioned that many times and you can watch the video and she said the heart have nothing to do with your death the Quran the Quran claim that the brain have nothing to do with controlling the thinking of the body if we go in the Quran we will find the following as long as she said the brain everything the heart have nothing to do with it then she need to mention to us and the Muslim they need to explain to us how the Quran say such a thing and remember now the Muslim cannot say this is a metaphorical because you are making it about science either you make the Quran about science or it is metaphorical when they want they will make it metaphorical when they want they will make it about science all right here it says in the Quran لهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها what does that mean let us see remember I'm not the one is making this not metaphorical it is the Muslims because the second you say that your Quran is speaking about science when you speak about your sleep and Allah did not make you die and that is about the brain where the brain does not exist there then we need to make it all of it is about science because this is obviously the book of science chapter 7 verse 179 Yusuf Ali translation many are the jinns and the men who have made we have made for hell they have heart wherewith they understand not so the Quran you know explain to us that the point or the place of understanding is the heart I can explain I can accept this if the Muslims as a, as a metaphorical if the Muslims are not involved in science in their book you know we can say like uh, my heart you know I, I love uh, my uh, this woman from all my heart but you know uh, is that really literally correct is it really scientifically correct the heart is involved with all the body with emotion because the second you get emotion all your body respond to those emotion however the emotion is in your brain because your brain is the one is telling you that this is the woman you like when you see the image of this woman this is the woman you like to be with or the women will make you happy to see her but the Quran and the Muslims are the one who make the Quran as a book of science the Quran confirm according to the Quran not to me that the heart is the point or the place or the station of understanding which means it is the station of control why they are not accepting Islam because their heart go blind they don't want to understand and again I can take this as metaphorical if the Muslims stop using the Quran as a book of science 
but then they go and take a verse for us have nothing to do with anything with the brain even the word the brain is not even mentioned and they say Allah he take you in your sleep to your in your death this is, doesn't talk about taking you as you claimed in your video because if this is the case that's mean that you Muslims only die when you are asleep and that's mean a human being they die only when they are asleep it's amazing how the Muslims they fabricate stories and they make it about something have nothing to do with even the topic what this have to do with the brain and what does it have to do with that when you are going to sleep you go in a stage where uh, you are not uh, thinking or read it with me it is Allah who take the soul so the Quran speak about soul science don't talk about soul science talk about electricity which is the blast of the heart and the connection between the brain and the heart the science does not speak of souls and this is how they try to fool you by quoting the names of some scientists when the fact this is nothing to do with science actually it's a stupid as an example as long as the muslim is speaking about science a person who can who, who die violently in the Quran how we can get him back to life the Muslims just to show you how the Muslim manipulate fictions and make it about science the Muslims they have videos about Quran teaching heart massage heart massage okay heart massage in the Quran Quran speak about heart massage what is that if we go right now and search on Google let me try. All right. Actually, there is a video. It's called Does the Heart Think or the Brain Made by Zach Zach and Nag? <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Heart massage in the Quran. Read it. This is, by the way, copy paste from Muslim Abdul website Harun Yahya. What is this website saying? Let's make it bigger. They say to you that in the Quran it's speaking about heart heart massage, how this happened. Are you sure? A person who died violently, the Quran mentioned that how you can bring him back to life by heart massage. But this is absolutely a big fat lie. Here they say to you, and I will show you the verse they are talking about. Remember when you killed someone violently, accused each other of it, and Allah brought out what you were hiding. We said, hit him with part of it. In what way Allah gives you life to the dead and he shows you his sign so that he uh, helpfully, you will understand. Chapter of Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 72-73. The Muslims explain, they say, among the meaning of the Arabic term, which means translated as with part of it, in the above verse, is someone or some people in the context that meaning the verse may reference may. You see how they cover their ass by saying may. Suddenly it's about may, it's not about science. Science doesn't go by may. Either this is what it means or it does not mean that. So maybe reference to heart massage but look hold on you idiot here it's speaking about somebody was killed violently by the sword so if we give a heart massage for the guy who killed violently by a bleeding we will get him back to life 
And where in this verse is speaking about the word heart? And where in this verse is speaking about the mat massage? This verse speak about a guy was killed, and Allah told Musa, "If you want to bring him to life, go and get the tail or the testicles or the penis or the tongue of the cow and hit the guy with it, and he will come back to life, and he will say the name of the killer, and he will die again." And look how they manipulate a stupid story in the Quran, and they make it about science. You believe it? How what is stupid suddenly became science? If you don't believe me that this is what the Quran is saying, let me show you. We will go to chapter Al Baqarah 72 73. Hold on. I mean, we are here. We did not go anywhere. Let us show everybody and everybody laugh. You Muslims are a bunch of jokers and you have no dignity. You love to lie and we are here to get you busted. Chapter 2, verse number 72, 73. Here we go. Let us zoom in. Abdul, Abdul. I like the Abdul. The, my favorite. Unbelievable how they lie. Unbe it's amazing. All right. Let us read the story. So we said, strike him, the dead man, with piece of the cow. I mean, where is the massage for God's sake? They made it about CPR and massage. This is a massage. Do you see here where the word heart is exist? It's not exist. It's a stupid story by a stupid prophet claiming that you can resurrect a man from death by beating him by what? Let us see exactly by what. Meaning, any part of the cow will produce the miracle if they struck the dead man with it. Any part of the cow? We were not told which part of the cow they used. Well, uh -huh. Maybe the testicles, maybe etc. Actually, in different hadith, it says how Allah he resurrect the, the man. But let us read here first before we go and read the other, other tafsir. Thus, Allah bring the dead to life means they struck him with it. And he came back to life. This ayah demonstrates Allah's ability in bringing the dead back to life. Allah made this incident proof <coughs> against the Jews that the resurrection shall occur. So this is, was a miracle. This is not about a massage. Do you see how they lie? What this have to do with the massage of the heart? They have no shame, no dignity. Let us go and see different interpretation. Maybe we can get more details about how Allah resurrect people from death. Because the doctors can use it. Even the FBI, a man he got killed, kill, killed violently. How we can find the name of the killer? Very simple. You do massage for him. How we do it? We beat him with the balls of the cow or the tail of the cow or the tongue of the cow. And Allah solved the problem. But the Muslims suddenly they make it about science. Let us see. Oh. All right. Hmm. Let us go to 73. <clears throat> so we say it submit him, the slain man. It's a slain man, not the man he died by heart attack. Do you see how they lie? What part of it? And so when we he struck with it the tongue or it is tail. <laughs> Imagine how the Muslims made what is a stupid suddenly is a fantastic science, and Allah supposedly is the one who knows science. This is why, my friend, I say to you. Don't ever believe a Muslim explain Islam to you. From stupidity and fairy tale stories, they jump and they make it about science. Now we continue here because they said that a person when he die, he die only when his brain stop. That is a stupid statement to say. Why? Because you are a Muslim. Let me tell you why. Because you as a Muslim, I'm not, I'm not saying this is against science. No, I'm saying this is against Islam because, because you're a prophet, he said, 
that when you are dead when you are dead your brain is still functioning and Allah will torture you in the grave and not only that Allah will ask you or the angels they will ask you three questions how Allah will ask you three questions if you have no brain functioning any Muslim can answer me hmm There was uh, there was a video by a Muslim Abdul. We used to play it in uh, in Pral Talk. It's hilarious. I wish I can play it. As I said, I'm trying to avoid playing Muslim, uh, uh, you know, uh, videos, so they will not, you know, use it as an excuse to flag our videos. According to Muhammad, when a person he go in the grave, Allah will send him to angels. And those angels, they are going to ask you three questions. Question. In the video, you Muslims claimed that when you're dead, when your brain is dead, you are dead. How in Islam, you idiots, and exp no, please allow me to say the word idiot because this is how the only way I can describe what you what you do. How in Islam you believe that you are dead, but yet you are going to be asked questions? Hmm? Your brain is dead, but the angels are asking you questions? How is that? But you told us that the brain is dead you are dead so are we dead when our brain dead or are we still alive that is a question we need to ask it to the funny Muhammad Muhammad he learned from the Jews that there is something is called the punishment of the grave and the Jews they have many legions they believe in it have nothing to do with the Bible. This is fiction, stupid stories. Muhammad, he copied it, he believed in it, and he practiced it, and he told his followers to believe in it. And even he insert many of it as part of the Quran. Even, even the God of the Quran claim that when you are in the grave, Allah will send you 99 dragons, all of them they will go inside your anus all of them this is why when a muslim sunni he die they insert in his anus a very hard piece of cotton and they be sure to push it so hard with the with the, with the wood stick to the point became so stiff so the, the dragons will not get inside And imagine Muhammad because he is a very smart person he claimed that Allah he torture you in the grave for a very main reason what is the main reason you see it in the screen it is the urine have you ever heard of such a religion you are dead but yet your brain is working you are dead but yet they ask you questions you are dead, but yet they are going to torture you and they beat you with the hammer and they will take you down 70 meter down. But yet in the videos, they said that you are dead only when your brain is dead. And this is totally a contradiction of what Islam teaching about a dead man that a dead man in the grave he is going to be punished and here in the front of us in this hadith you will see where Muhammad he learned this Muhammad is a copy paste person he is a liar he is a false prophet a Jewish woman she came to Aisha she asked her she said to her I seek refuge from God against the punishment of the grave Aisha she laughed she said what what punishment of the grave there's no such a thing 
There is no such a thing. So Aisha, she asked Muhammad, this woman, she's crazy. She's saying that there is a punishment in the grave. Muhammad, he said, oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 there is, there is, there is. And then Aisha, she explained that since she told Muhammad about the punishment of the grave, Muhammad never pray without saying, I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. Which mean Muhammad he never ever mentioned this punishment until he heard it from the Jews. He heard the, the Aisha what the Jews what the Jewish woman she said to her. Muhammad he liked the idea. He adopted the idea, and the hadith as you see here. If you go back, you will see the Aisha she confirmed that Muhammad he never pray after that without saying I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. Read with me carefully. I asked the, the Messenger of Allah, S A W F M, Mercedes Benz, about the torment of the grave. He said, Yes, the torment of the grave is real. Aisha said, After that, I never saw the Messenger of Allah, S A W in big, look how big it is, offer any prayer, but he would seek refuge. With Allah from the truth, the, the torment of the grave. Okay, hold on. If Muhammad is a true prophet and he knew about this already, how come never before he seek refuge by Allah from the punishment of the grave? Before it was not scary, now it's scary. You know what I mean? Because Aisha confirmed here that she never heard Muhammad saying that because this is why she's asking him about it. Are you guys getting the idea? Aisha, she never heard this before. This is why when she heard the Jewish woman, she's saying that she did not believe it. And she told her there's no such a thing. What punishment of the grave? So she went to Muhammad to ask him about that. And Muhammad, he confirmed that. Yeah, yeah, there is. There is. And since then, as you see, Aisha, she said, he never, ever, ever pray without saying, I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. So why? All your life before you never mentioned the punishment of the grave Islam is a collection of stupidity and the Muslims they do their best to fool you and fool children's your children's about science and the Quran if there is any Muslim he have the courage and the knowledge to speak about science and the Quran please feel free and if you want to protect your children's from what it's called the science of the Quran, my friend, you better go and get my books. It is the best way to give your children the flu shot. So Muslims cannot fool them and say to them, when you, in our book, we have science. In your book, you have no science. You have fictions. You have a stupidity. And you have manipulation. You try to make what is a stupid, you try to make it science. And what is a crazy and funny and garbage Break it to try to make it as priceless. This is why education is very important. The Muslims they try to play with the mind of a human being, taking advantage of your ignorance because you do not know, and as long as you do not know, we can tell you that this verse means whatever we wish. You don't speak the language, you don't speak Arabic, we can't lie to you, and then we change the meaning of the verse and we make it about science, and then we insert some scientist names in the middle of from the middle of nowhere, and then that will make you believe that Quran is a book of science. Is it really? Quran is not the book of science, Quran is the book of stupidity. I challenge any Muslim to call me right now. If he there, just tell me you want to call. I will open my Skype and I challenge you to you. You pick up any scientific claim in the Quran, anything you wish. And if I don't debunk your lie in less than one minute, I will apologize from you. One minute. Any Muslim? 
the three questions the angel somebody is asking what is the three questions uh, uh you know the the angel will ask will ask the muslim in the grave supposedly the first question they will ask him what is your religion what is your religion i mean this look how stupid this is uh those questions i mean this is stupid <clears throat> What is your religion? He's a Muslim. So the guy who will say, I'm a Muslim, they ask him them, what is your God? He says, Allah. I mean, he's, he's a Muslim. His God is what? The questions are stupid. Then they will show him a picture of the Prophet Muhammad and they will say to him, who is this guy? So here in those three quiz questions, the quiz of death, each time they ask you a question, if you give a wrong answer, they hit you with the hammer in your head and that will take you 70 70 meter down or 70 arms down and look how stupid this story because now you told us the questions you told us the correct answers me christian prince if i go to the grave and i am i am dead but yet i am not dead the questions are going to be given uh, i'm going to have a questions in the grave and they will say to me who is your what is your what, what is your religion i will say islam okay man angel islam who is your God? I will say Allah. Who is this guy? Muhammad. I mean, how I know that even the guy in the image is Muhammad? How did we see him before? Stupid stories, fictions, but they, and look how they try to make what is a stupid to make it as science. Uh, I, uh, let me let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get you the hadith. <coughs> Hold on. If you notice, Muslims, when they go to the grave, they put a kind of a plant, they, they push it inside the sand of the grave. Why? Because Muhammad, he told them that would light the pressure of the punishment of the grave on them. I mean, have you ever heard of this? <laughs> pressure. The guy is, is became sand long time ago. Ah, uh, stupidity. Um, all right. Let us see. I'm just trying to find the hadith about this. I have all the hadith actually in front of me, but they are in Arabic. I want to find it in English. Actually, there's a hadith in the in Al-Qurtubi that the mule of the Prophet, she gets scared and she avoid going between the graves because she heard People screaming in their graves. Um, now, let me show you this one first. But I don't know if we can find it in English, really. I will try. Actually, here, before we go, here you see in this hadith how Aisha, she said to the Jewish women, I don't believe in this. Two of all Jewish women of al Medina, which means Yathrib, which Muhammad, he killed the Jews and he took over the city, came to me and said, the people of the graves are tormented in their graves. But I did not believe them. And I did not believe them. And I did not believe them. I don't want to believe them. You see it how many times she repeated? Because this is impossible. Who is the one is talking? This is Aisha. 
Now, this is a very clear proof that Aisha, she never heard this story before. They left. The Jewish women, they left. The Messenger of Allah entered upon me, and I said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. Okay. Oh, Messenger of Allah. Two of all Jewish women of Al Medina said that the people of the grave are tormented in their graves. He said they spoke the truth. They are tormented in the manner that animals can hear. You see it? So Muhammad he claimed that animals can hear you being tortured in the grave. Now the Muslims they will make a miracle about this and they will say see the Prophet he knew that the animals they have a special sensation just wait <laughs> and here you will see that Aisha she said and after that day I never saw the Prophet but he say I seek refuge by Allah from the portion of the grave why Muhammad never said that before because he's a liar he's a fake man he never heard this before now he heard it and Aisha she confirmed that two Jewish women they confirmed that so it must be true it must be true so Muhammad he took it he confirmed it he taught his people and now all the Muslims believe that the grave is a place of torture torture All of those is a stupid stories. Muhammad, he got them from somewhere. And in this case, it was the Jews. Always Muhammad, he copied from somewhere. The same as the Muslims today. The Muslims, they try to copy scientists, insert it, make an article, a speech, insert it in the Quran to make you believe that the Quran is a book of science. When in fact, the Quran is nothing but a joke. It's a stupid thing. Actually, uh, even the Quran, I mean, why we are going to the Hadith, uh, if we go in the Quran, let me see, hold on. Hmm. Let us see. You see, even the Quran speak that when you go in the grave, the angels will beat you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait. Why the Muslim don't make a chapter? Uh, I mean, a miracle about this science. Chapter eight, verse number fifty. Muslim translation. Let us read together. If thou could see when the angels take the soul of the unbeliever at death, how they submit their faces. Do you see it? They beat them in their faces. And this is what the hadith speak about, that the angels, they will beat you with the hammers made from a steel. It's not exist in this earth. There's no steel like it. Did you watch this movie? The I don't know what they call it, the Titan, something, the guy, he's holding a hammer, and this hammer is so powerful. Here we go. The angels will beat you in your face. If we go and see what is the meaning of this verse, chapter 8, verse number 50, because I don't want the Muslim to say, this guy, he is making things up. Let us see the meaning for it. Does it say really that the angels will beat them in their face or Christian Prince is fabricating? Maybe the, maybe the translation is saying that, but maybe the real meaning is not. Let us see. All right. Let us zoom in. The fact it says here that they are going to beat their faces is going to beat to beat their asses. They will spank you, so they will beat you in your face, and they will spank you in your ass. Read with me. They submit their faces and their backs. Where, where, where they beat you? 
so now we are dead yet the angels they are going to spank you in your ass I mean isn't it obvious that this is science You die, the angels will beat you in your face and they will spank your ass. Are you sure, Muslims? But I thought in the science you told us that you are dead when your brain is dead. So are we dead or not? How we are dead and now you are going to beat him in his... What, what beating someone in the face would do for someone is dead, his brain is dead, he feels nothing. This is how the Muslims make from the stupid Islam something smart. By changing the meaning, playing with the meaning, trying to fool you, inserting some names of some scientist you might hear heard of, just to believe to make you believe that Islam is a book of science. Do we have any Abdul? I just wanted to share this video with you so we can refute those liars about their lies. Please feel free. Uh, I just heard read your Mo Moses slap the angels of death and get uh, yeah yeah actually there is the story. Moses when the angel of death Allah he sent him to take the life of Moses. What Moses did? Moses looked like he used to watch karate grossly. So Moses. Moses, he did beat the angel and he broke his wings. Let me get you the hadith. Hold on. And he refused to die. <laughs> <laughs> and then the angels he went to Allah and Allah he fixed his eyes he made a plastic surgery for him and he fixed his wing because Moses he broke his wing too read with me science why the Muslim don't add this in their science videos it says here Abu Huraira reported that the angel of death, Abu Huraira reported from who? From Muhammad. Remember, this is all is coming from Muhammad. Abu Huraira is a person who speak what Muhammad he said, not what he said. All right? This is not the words of Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira reported that Allah Messenger, Allah pray on him and salute him, said that death came to Moses. Who is death? This is an angel of death. Read carefully with me, Abdul. Respond to the call of Allah, i.e. prepared for death. So the angel came to Moses. He said, Moses, get ready. You are going to die. Moses gave him a blue blow. In his in the eye <laughs> of the angel of death. <laughs> and knock it out. Like, what the heck? He knocked the eye out. I mean, this guy is so good in boxing. You, you don't play with that with Musas. Don't ever try. I mean, are you stupid, you angel? You are trying to tell Musas get ready to die. Are you stupid or what? So what Moses did, he did boxing, he did box the angel in his eye, and he took it off. The angel, he went back to Allah crying. <laughs> you send me, look what it says. This is not me saying that. The angel, he went back to Allah. The exalted and said, you send me to your servant who does not like to die. 
have you ever heard of such a thing? Okay, the angel will come to me. I don't like to die. I will knock his eye. And he knocked out my eye. Like, what the heck? I thought an angel can knock an army. And this is the angel of death. Obviously, is very weak. He hit him in the eye. He knocked his eye out. And Allah restored his eye to its pr proper place. What is that? In his balls? Muslims, can, them, can somebody tell me where is the proper place for the eye of the angel? Islam is a collection of stupidity. And the more stupid you are, the more you are close to Allah. I never heard of a God and not only that actually the story continue I mean if you read the story the story is hilarious Allah start negotiating with Musa about how long you want to live <laughs> you believe it so when this happened <clears throat> Allah told the angel <laughs> the poor guy the angel go to my servant and say do you want life and in case you want life Keep your hand on the body of the ox and you would live such a number of years as the number of the hair on uh, uh, your hand covers. Guys, do you know how much the ox have hair in his back? For sure, depend on what kind of ox you, you have. But ox, ox, they are hairy and, you know, they depend on the kind. But even if they have a short hair, but they have a lot of hair. How long Musa's they live? How much hair your hand can cover? And you are asking him, do you want to live? I mean, obviously the guy he want to live, he did beat the hell of the, the angel, don't you see? He don't want to die. And now Allah give him a chance. You put your hand in the top of the ox and based on that, you live as, as much as your cover of hair. What kind of logic this logic is? Can we reject the order of Allah if he is God? Can I refuse death if Allah, he decide my death? Isn't it the Muslim they say to us that our fate is decided? What is the fate here? As you see, uh, Musa, he fought his fate and he won. But as usual, Muhammad is a person who copy from other people stories copy and add some spices and the more spices he add the more stupid things get and then Musa said what then like what the heck Musa is, is is bargaining with Allah what then so what what then he said then he would die Whereupon he upon said Musa's, then why not a, what why not now? Like what the heck? What do you mean why not now? You are the one who did, did beat the, the angel eye. Ah, you thought you don't want to die. Then he prayed, Allah cause me to die close to the sacred land. Please, aren't you half hour ago you beat the angel? Stupid religion, garbage in, garbage out. Yet they try to fool you and make what is stupid to be a book of science. I don't want to stay long, so you guys can download the video. Please feel free to download it. And, uh, you know, uh, be with us today at 4.30 p.m. New York time. We will be, we will be up live on air again. I just wanted to get the Abdul busted about this lie, uh, which uh, all their videos is a lie. And this is my challenge to the Muslims. All of you are welcome to call me when I'm live in the air. And my challenge for you, very simple. Choose for me the hardest scientific miracle which I cannot get you busted with it. It's a challenge. You choose it. And I will get it busted. Guaranteed. Your money guaranteed. 
you know what we can bet one thousand dollar on that what do you say Muslims if I cannot get you busted about your lie I will pay you one thousand dollar Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim want to call? If you are a Muslim, you want to call, give me one in the text, please. Mayday, Mayday, any Muslim, Mayday. I am the Christian prince, and I am the one who get your prophet busted with his stupidity. And the lies you must have tried to make to make Islam look something valid. Everything in your cult is stupid. Nothing in your cult, even the fairy tale stories, is from your prophet. It is something he stole. Everything in your cult is a theft. Nothing is original. Even the original, which is a stupid fairy tale, it is a theft. And this is why. I challenge you to prove me wrong. And guys, from now on, if the angel of death come to you and he said to you, Habibi, Habibi, get ready. Today is your day to die. What do you do? Don't give up. Hit him in the eye. Knock his eye out. He will go back to Allah. Allah will send him back to you and he will negotiate with you how long you want to live. Yes, my friend, answer you about what? Freedy, answer you about what? Can somebody tell me what the question of this gentleman here? What do you, what do you, uh, what do you after you joined with Jesus and family? What you do after you join with Jesus and family? I don't know what do you mean. What you do after you join with Jesus and family? What is that? I don't understand the question. You have to make your question clear. I don't know if your English is not first language or. After I die. My friend, the Messiah, he said, our Lord, our Savior, whoever die and believe in me will live. Now, how and what exactly the details, I don't really care. What I care for, that I believe that he is giving us a real promise. The Messiah, he proved himself that he is a person who can resurrect people from death. The Messiah, he proved that he can do what nobody can do. So I have no reason for a second to have a doubt that the Messiah will not keep his promise. How God, how what I will be, how my spirit will be, none of my concern really. Because God, he is the one who designed everything and he knew what is better for us. If I, you know, there is there is many questions a human being would like to ask, would like to know, right? But I find that those questions is useless because at the, at the end of the day, if I know them, if I know the answer for them or not, we're not to change anything. At the end of the day, it's what God he wants is going to happen. So we will die. This is for sure. We'll be resurrected. This is based on faith and belief. And we believe in that. And as long as we believe in this, we believe that this is mean this is true. Now, how the resurrection will be, as the Bible says that, by the power of God will be resurrected and we will have a new body and we will have a new we will be new people We will not be the same This is why we will new will be new people because simply in the heaven of God We will be the same as angels. What does that mean? We will not be people who need to eat and sleep and drink We will be free We will have different kind of body which is do not need anything to survive you will be a new creation. So you will be resurrected. And the resurrection here means that you will be reunited as a spirit with the body. Still before you go to heaven, you are going to be a new person. How that can be or how that can happen, well, God who made me exist, 
he can make that happen easy God who said let be light light was he can make me he say let him be something and I will be that thing so in the heaven of our God we will not be having sex as Islam Jesus said he and she when they get to heaven they will be the same as angels so we will have a very different kind of of, uh, of uh, uh, creation and we will live the same as a spiritual uh, you know let us say we will be uh, uh, happy in a spirit we will be happy uh, in existence and our happiness cannot be compared to any happiness we know because the happiness in afterlife in Christianity is not about your stomach is full with food or about having sex with men and women is not about you know uh, uh, like uh, enjoying uh, uh, something you watch or a movie it is different kind of happiness something we never experienced before I leave what to God to God where you wait for the judgment day I do not need to wait for the judgment day judgment day can happen now we do not need to wait in a place what wait there's a wait in place a room you know what what is that you know all those questions is a stupid questions as I believe because where we wait and what will happen we don't believe that God will ask me three questions and will say to me who is your God I say um, Elohim uh -huh, okay and who what is your religion I say a Christian uh-huh and who is this guy I say oh this is a Christ we don't believe in this garbage so don't waste your time and ask stupid questions useless what wait what wait mean why we will wait first of all we as a Christian when we die our body die our spirit does not spirit never die spirit is always alive this is why it's called resurrection which means you reunite the body with the spirit so the death is the death of the body only and this is even for the human so waiting in a place that is not even a scenario and why you are asking such a questions I mean how silly is that do you are you going to ask me next are you going to sit in a chair are you going to ask me next is there is water there are you going to ask me next like are we going to go to the bathroom when we are waiting for judgment day I mean what the what kind of questions those questions are is meant for what is meant like to, to just to talk like a child or to, to speak like an adult oh no we will not wait for the judgment day after I die because simply I will be dead my friend time doesn't count you see time count for you when you are alive but after that what you wait for what I mean what what waiting for this is silly this is stupid actually wait what wait <laughs> I'm not waiting for anything I die today I live tomorrow I resurrected tomorrow judgment day come a million years from now it's still the same that is not a waiting period cannot be even considered as a waiting period because when you are dead time mean nothing you have a limited period of time you live that is your chance to be survival or to survive with God you accept God you believe in him you will survive and you will be with him after that there is nothing it's called waiting I will be waiting I mean waiting I'm dead what waiting by the way, just like give me give me a call when I when I die because maybe we can me and you like if you are dead and I am dead we can chat or huh? or what about you 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 reserve a grave next to me hmm? we can talk I can ask my family to put a smartphone with me in the grave and we can chat if you have a WhatsApp so don't ask those silly questions we Christians don't believe in silly stuff let what to God to God and what to you is to you God time for him is not exist he is out of time when you are dead you don't count days because simply you don't feel the days so if it's a day it's if it's a, a thousand if it's a million you are dead you feel nothing don't ask please silly questions those questions you can ask it if you are a Muslim to a Muslim Sheikh Muslim Sheikh you ask him a brother when I am dead 
are the, the snake are they going to to bite my penis or they are going to sew inside the anus and then the sheikh start explaining to you he will say depend if you are a person you used to commit adultery which means you do muta but you don't pay uh, the women the penis might be bitten by the snake if you are a person used not to read Quran, then the 99 dragons will go inside your anus. Those are stupid details. If you are looking for them, go and speak to Muslims. Here we go. We as a Muslim, I understand why you're asking those questions because, because those are stupid questions. You don't wait for the judgment day, my friend. No, no, you don't wait for the judgment day. You are going to be tortured in your grave. Don't you see what we are showing you, my friend? You will be tortured in the grave. There's no waiting period. The torture start from the second you are in the grave. Obviously, you do not know Islam very much. And then Muhammad speak about uh, you know uh, the judgment day. He say that you will be covered by your sweat, and the sun will be so close to you to the point it's almost like a mile away from us. That's in, that's impossible, stupid. Because if the sun is mile away from the earth, the sun will swallow the earth. Do you know how small the sun compared to the earth? It's a fiction, stupidity, you know, the tons of stories full of madness. And Muhammad simply is just trying to terrify you in order to make you believe in him. That's all. What punishment in the grave? God will punish me in the grave because I piss. Have you ever heard of a God like this? Piss? I mean, the God, he has nothing to do except investigating peace. Do you really believe in this? Look what your prophet said. Urination is the main cause of punishment in the grave. Do you see it? So now, Allah is the pink panther detective of pissing. So if you are a, piss, you are a person who piss, and then some piss touch your toes or touch your foot, Allah will torture you in the grave. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? You see, Allah will not torture you because you are a rapist in the grave. Allah will not torture you because you are a child molester like Muhammad. Allah will not torture you because you are a thief. Allah will not torture you because you are a criminal. Allah will torture you because you piss. Have you ever heard of madness like this? So don't worry about waiting period as a Muslim. Worry about yourself, how you piss these days. If I am you, I will be very careful. I mean, look what piss will do to you. If I am you, before I go to the bathroom, I will wrap myself with the plastic all over. It's better maybe if you come by those clothes they wear for collecting honey from the hive because you don't want to be tortured in the in the grave, not in the judgment day. This is in the grave. You are just you, you just die now. You enter the grave right away, they start beating the hell of you. Why? Because you piss. And that will go enter judgment day. Imagine you have two angels enter judgment day, they are beating the hell of you. Why? Because you piss in your foot. And this is what make Muslims are very silly people. They look at the questions they ask. Look at the garbage you have, my friend. Before you ask those questions about waiting, go and then you are going to be in the grave and they will insert it. Not only that, the Quran says that when you die, my friend, Allah will insert in your anus a chain. What the Quran says, Asliku, let us see. And the funny, the chapter is uh, number 69. <laughs> Read it. According to the Quran, when you are in the grave, my friend, Allah will insert uh, in your anus a chain, and this chain is very, very huge. Let us go. And it's a miracle, by the way, that the chapter number is 69. 69, chain in your anus. What you are waiting a what you are worried about waiting period. You need to worry about your anus, you need to worry about your penis, you need to worry about your piss. You have many things to worry about, my friend. 
please concentrate with me save your ass literally save your ass the only religion we can say save your ass literally is Islam look what Allah will do to you this is God this is God he say that I mean what kind of God he say this God will insert inside your anus a huge chain and every ring of this chain is bigger than all all the amount of iron in the world read with me carefully then fasten him on a chain wherefore length is 70 cubit okay, what does that mean hold on every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the iron found in this world Oof, how big this chain man all of this just to for me and then al awfi reported from ibn abbas the cousin of muhammad that etc said each cubit will be former length of an angel angel ibn ibn jurair juraj reported from ibn abbas said firstly ku which mean it will be entered into his buttocks like what 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 so my friend when i say to you save your ass i mean it literally <laughs> this is a religion And Allah will insert in your anus, in your buttocks, a chain. And this chain, every ring of it, is more than all the iron in the world. How big is your anus, Muslims? I mean, you Muslims have a special anus or what? How you can, how Allah he can put it there? Let me guess. Allah will buy a lot of uh, Vaseline. Every ring of it is more than all the iron in the world. And all of this will go inside your anus. What's wrong with this God? Obviously, Muhammad was watching too much horror movies. God, who uh, this, this God, he like anus, man. And not only this, they will insert it in his buttocks. But guess what? Hold on, the movie is not over. I mean, things is getting even nicer. It will be inserted into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth. Like, what the heck? His mouth? <laughs> My friend. If you want, if you don't want this, this to happen to you, save your ass, and I mean it literally, because obviously in Islam your your ass is not saved. It is the target of Allah. This God, He love your buttocks, as you see. I mean, the God. The, what is the connection between God and buttocks? There's no connection except in Islam. The second I say Allah, remember one thing: buttocks. The only God who will play with your buttocks is Allah. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, brother. MashaAllah. And this is why you can ask your Sheikh, Mr. Uh, Afridi, why Muslims, when they die, they insert a piece of cotton in their anus. Because there is many hadith, this is nothing in the hadith, and even the Quran says, which means we will, we will, we will put him in the brave, and you will be blind, but you will be awake, blind and awake, and you will be, you will be bold. And a snake will have a lot of a bald head is going to enter your your anus, and this snake have ninety nine head dragons. And what they will do? They will go inside your anus. So now, with the first step, is the snakes inside your anus. And then after the snakes are finished, huh, Allah will take you and he will start inserting in your anus this chain, which is amazing and beautiful. And by the way, don't worry about rust because I believe that this uh, chain is like, you know, like rust proof. You know what I mean? I mean, you might be worried about rust now.
I mean, yeah, like you think about it, Allah insert a chain in your anus and then the chain start trusting. So at least we need to be sure that the iron Allah will use and he will insert inside the anus of a Muslim is not going to rust. You know what I mean? And look, then the story is not over. Then, uh huh, they will be arranged on his chain, just his on this chain, just like lotus or arrange. Oh, oh, okay, on a stick like a barbecue, barbecue, you know, barbecue. Yeah, okay, Allah will put you in a barbecue stick. <laughs> I love barbecue. I did not do barbecue for long, but I now I lost my appetite to barbecue. Do we have any Muslim here want to say something? I hope I was not harsh on this gentleman. By the way, I'm not against you, you Muslim who is listening. I apologize really if I am harsh on you, but this, your religion is stupid, man. What what uh, judgment day and we will be waiting? Don't you see what's talking about? I mean, this is crazy. What kind of God this God is? What is that? Anus? God the Almighty, the one who created the seven eleven uh, heaven, uh, according to Muhammad, he is going to insert in your anus chain. Man. I did not eat kebab for a long time. Hmm. This uh, remind me, the mercy of Allah is amazing. I just remember Sheikh kebab. But since I heard that the Prophet, are you not scared of Allah? Allah is, excuse my language, guys. Excuse my language. Allah is my ass, my friend. What are you talking about? Who's Allah? There's no Allah. What? Don't you see how stupid this is? This is God. God, He would say, He would say such a stupid thing. What Allah? What's wrong with you, my friend? Do you really believe in such a God to be exist? Have you ever heard of God saying that the man have a sperm coming from his backbone? I'm scared because of that. Actually, what make it more scary that Allah, he said that women have a sperm coming from their breast. And since that day, I don't want to see any women naked. <laughs> that is a scary. Women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs. And you are asking me if I am scared of God? I'm scared of women now. Are you scared of Allah? What kind of Allah this Allah is? If your God is a true God, my friend, he will not say stupid things. Your God is not exist. Your God is a joke. Yeah, the Quran says that women she have a sperm coming from her back, you know, uh, from her ribs. Yeah. If we go to chapter 86, verse number seven, hold on. All right. Allah is a scientist. He liked to tell us science. I mean, it's amazing, amazing how he knew those things. I cannot believe it. It is he who created you water gushing forth meaning the sexual fluid that comes brushing breasting sorry forth from the man and the women really Allah saying that the women she have a breasting fluid coming out <laughs> and I am a created from that oh mommy oh mommy mommy blue eye mommy what you did mommy Thus, the child is produced from both of them by the permission of Allah. How did it happen? Let us see. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Like, what the heck? The backbone and the ribs? Guys, I don't want to eat ribs. Look at this guy. Allah is listening to you. My friend, your God is dead. You Muslims are praying to Allah to free Jerusalem from the Jews. For how long? Allah is deaf. The only thing the Arab is helping them is the American. God, just face it, Abdul. Just face it. What Allah? What are you talking about? Allah is listening to you. Yeah, you know, Allah is listening to you. By the way, Allah doesn't speak English. Just to let you know. 
Yeah, he speaks Arabic only. That's why you must then pray to him in Arabic. Have you ever heard of God here? He want to take uh, the, the prayer only in Arabic? Why? Because he's a racist. Allah is listening to you. No, Allah is not listening to me. I'm speaking English. Let it go. Let it go. So the Quran, the book of science, confirm that there is a sperm of the women and a sperm for the man. The sperm of the man is coming to the backbone. This is why there is a famous song. It says, "Backbone, backbone, what you gonna do?" What you gonna do when I come for you backbone backbone? You know the song, right? This is a story or inspired by the Quran. What kind of God you are telling me he is listening to me, my friend? He say that a man he have a sperm coming from the backbone. Your God Allah never heard of something is called balls. Hmm. He is waiting to see you when I die. Yeah, he's dead already. Yeah. From the between the backbones and the ribs, like what the heck? There is ribs involved in making babies these days. What is that? Meaning. Oof, 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 oof. Things is getting now deep. <clears throat> Meaning the backbone of the man. Oh, and the ribs of the women. If, 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 Freddy, your mother, with my respect to her, according to the Quran, she produced you from the location of the necklace. She have orgasm, and the sperm is coming from there. <laughs> Listen, Freddy, isn't it this is enough for you? To leave this cult, it's called Islam. Is it this is in the front of you is enough to prove that Allah is a false god? Do you really have a brain of a toy? Are you a human being or a little toy? How a human being can believe in a garbage like this? You can go right now and search on Google and ask yourself where is the sexual fluid of the man is coming from? If the scientists they say to you it is the backbone, that's mean Allah is God. If the scientists they say it's not the backbone, what you would do? Allah is sitting in his throne. Mm. Mm. Guys, how, how you can talk to those people? My friend, let me show you that Allah cannot hear me when he is sitting in his throne. You see, you forced me to change the topic. I mean, what I can do? I, I I cannot resist the Muslims' intelligence. Muslims are so smart. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Come on, guys, show respect. Okay, this is what our friend here he said. Let me put it for you in the screen. And as you know, I am here not to insult anyone. I'm not insulting him, please. I'm just here to show him that Islam is a stupid religion. As simple as that. Allah is sitting in his throne and watching you. What if I show you that Allah, when he is sitting in the throne, he lose his hearing? What do you do? Are you there, Fre uh, Freddy? Uh, Freddy. Are you there? What if I show you that Allah, when He is on the top of the what you call a throne, which is a chair, He cannot hear me? Are you there? Okay, let me show you that. Guys, He said yes, show me. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> The apostle said, please show respect. The apostle said, it must be true. I mean, you know, the prophet never, never lie, you know. <clears throat> as long as Muhammad says, the, this is what happened, that's what happened. <clears throat> Allah, apostle said, 
when it is the last third of the night our Lord the blessed the superior descend every night what what in the last in the last third part of the night what Allah do he take off And now Allah is going down, down, down. He descends every night to the heaven of the world. So Allah now is going away or not up, down. His airplane going down. And then he says, is there anyone who invokes me? As you see, my friend, your God Allah cannot hear me when he is in the top of his throne he have to come down and then he asked anyone invoking me question to you why Allah don't ask me if he can hear me from anywhere from the top of his throne why he have to come to the lowest heaven so he can hear me simply the answer is very simple. Let me give you a hand. Because Allah reception is not good. Obviously, he is using a Middle Eastern cell phone company. Mostly, it's a Saudi company. Which is renting a satellite from Pakistan. This is why the reception is not good. Otherwise, I challenge you to tell me how Allah he can hear me in the top of his throne but yet he cannot hear your prayer unless you go down do you see it this is God so your God I don't know I mean Islam is just, I mean, it's it's amazingly stupid I don't know where to go with it the more you talk about this stupid cult the more you go crazy God, he will go down every night. I mean, God is coming up, going down, coming up, going down. You know, what do you mean every night? What night? <laughs> Guys, do you, anyone, anyone, closer? Guys, did you see what uh, Freddy, he said, Allah is getting closer. <laughs> Why? And closer where? You Muslim, you say to us that you reject Jesus to be God because God cannot be inside his creation, but Allah is descending down. He is inside his creation now. How we can solve this problem? Allah is going inside. He go down to the lowest heaven. Going where? Inside the heaven. He descend each night to the earth skies every night anyway this guy obviously he's taking too much hashish anyway guys don't forget uh if you are a muslim don't forget please to give our video dislike mayday mayday dislike is needed please i feel offended if you are a muslim and you stop by my video and you don't give it and dislike i mean it's not even fair that's mean I did not do my job correctly. A Muslim and not giving me dislike. I dislike that. It doesn't make me feel good. So please, I cannot believe it that until now my video did not have one dislike. This is insulting to me. It's offensive. What is next? You Muslim, you will say, God bless you? What the heck? What's happening today? Too much hashish or what? So please, Muslim, don't forget to give my video dislike. At least one. And if you are new in our channel, don't forget to subscribe. And literally, Muslims, to believe in such a God, 
you have to be worried about your buttocks as we showed you from the Quran a God who target the buttocks of a human being he is a buttocks God literally I don't want to get close to this God this God obviously is a gay is a homo what buttocks I mean hold him from his nose hold him from his ears but inserting chain in his buttocks okay what what if you insert the chin in the buttocks and then poopoo start coming out man I mean this is disgusting Billy are you enjoying that unbelievable thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you by the way for those who they speak German language my book in German is already available online in Amazon.de. All right. My book in German language is already available in Amazon.de. So if you are a German person, um, let me uh, Amazon. Unbelievable. I wanted to type Amazon.de added because this Quran is a book of Anus. I type Anus.de um, Amazon.de. All right. Crazy, crazy religion. Crazy religion. This is a crazy religion. All right. I will put the link for the my book. In you believe it now? I am doing live broadcast, and my uh, 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 my mouse lost connection. How embarrassing! Unbelievable! What? <laughs> I lost connection. <laughs> I cannot move my mouse. Okay, hold on. Let me read Quran. Quran will solve the problem. Oh boy, uh, how we can solve this issue now? Sometimes it goes for 15 minutes without. Well, hold on, hold on. Where is the thing? Where is the thing? Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe the battery is off. Okay, guys, I can't even see the screen. Good for you. Okay, now let's see. I will use the other. Let's see now. It's a miracle. The Muslim, they will make a video and they will say, Allah, stop the mouse of Christian Prince. Ta -da -da. Da -da -da I mean, that's ew. brother. Did you see what happened in Christian Prince? Brother, what happened? Brother, Allah stopped his mouse. Oof. Oof. How that happened? Very, very amazing. Let us see now. All right. Anyway, guys, this is the link. This is the link. Uh, this is the name of the book. And this is the link for it. I'm not sure if the link will come through. Maybe it's not going to come through in Amazon, in uh, Google. Is the link coming? So if you are a person who speak uh, German, please feel free to get to go to Amazon.de, which means Germany. It's available, by the way, in Amazon.com, but I advise you to order it from Amazon.de if you are in Germany, because that means, as I understand, it's a free, uh, free shipping, I think. All right. 
so thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you all and for the Muslims I am NOT here to insult you or to make fun of you but I have to be honest your God is an official idiot God and your prophet is a certified liar therefore I cannot resist the temptation of showing respect to a certified liar like Muhammad however Muslims who they are certified liar like Muhammad who make videos about scientific miracle in the Quran I am here to give you another stamp to your certification to certify you more so you will be qualified to work in politics a bunch of liars 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 what you gonna do what you gonna do when I come for you and I am the Christian Prince and the nightmare of Allah thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you all and I will see you today actually not tomorrow at 4 30 p.m. New York time today is today is Saturday remember 4 30 p.m. New York time unless I have something emergency made me unable to come but which mean mostly I will be here so until I see you then may the Lord bless you all and enjoy your weekend and enjoy your day and don't forget to pray for those who need your prayer Christ is Lord Islam is false I mean to that and see you soon again bye bye